In this video, we're going to talk about uncertainty analysis. In a little while, we're going to be doing a four-point bending test of a beam, um, and we're going to get the ultimate yield strength of the, the wood that we're testing. So in our handout, we decided that the ultimate yield strength is going to be equal to three times the failure load times the length between the two rollers divided by the base times height squared of the member. So if we have the member, the bottom dimension is the base, and the vertical dimension is the height. Uh, for the rest of this video, just to be a little bit clearer, I'm going to, uh, and to avoid confusion, I'm going to use S to denote the ultimate yield strength instead of sigma, because we're going to be talking a lot about standard deviations, and I don't want to get confused on our um, on our notation. So the member is supposed to be, the space in between the rollers is supposed to be 4 inches. The member is supposed to be um, seven, 3 quarters of an inch wide by half an inch tall. And let's just say that we run this through the instrument machine and we get a failure load of 325 pounds. Well, we plug in all these numbers into our equation, and we get that our ultimate failure uh, strength is going to be 20.8 kips per square inch. And we're feeling pretty good ourselves. But what happens if our measurements are off by 1 16th of an inch? Uh, maybe the saw blade was set 1 16th of an inch too wide, and so we're off by that amount, 1 16th of an inch. That's roughly 10%. Uh, of our base and our height value. Um, so our new base is actually uh, going to be um, 13 sixteenths or 0 0.8125 inches and our new height is going to be 9 sixteenths or 0 0.5625 inches. Um, and so we plug those numbers uh, into our formula, and we get that our uh, ultimate strength is going to be, uh, in this case, our ultimate strength is going to be 15.2 KSI. Um, that's an error of about 37%. which is uh, pretty unacceptable in the engineering world to have 37% error in a calculation. Um, so it becomes clear that it's really important that we measure, and in this case we need to measure, we decided we should measure to the nearest 1 16th of an inch. If we're even off by 1 16th of an inch, we're going to be off by quite a bit. Um, now even if we use a ruler, so here I have a ruler that's marked to the nearest 16th of an inch, we can expand our precision. So um, our precision, we can estimate to the nearest 32nd of an object that I'm going to measure here. I could probably estimate. I could probably estimate to the nearest 32nd of an inch what the length of that object is. So in this case, um, I think this is probably about 23 seconds of an inch long on the ruler. Um, now, not everyone is going to measure this the same way, and so we're going to have some variance in our measurement, some uncertainty in our measurement, and that's going to be, uh, you know, maybe it's a little bit longer or a little bit shorter than this, but we're only estimating about half the, the smallest gradation. We said our, our precision is up to one thirty-second of an inch because our nearest gradation is uh, one sixteenth of an inch and then our uh, standard deviation in our measurement is going to be half of that or one sixty-fourth of an inch. And so our standard deviation, if we use this ruler to measure the base and the height, the standard deviation of our or the uncertainty in our base measurement is equal to one sixty-fourth of an inch and that's also equal to the uncertainty in our height measurement. So now the question is, is how do these errors propagate through our equation 
um, to give us some level of confidence in our value that we've received when we uh, first calculated the, um, the yield stress. So I'm going to take this example again. And in this ex example, I'm going to use the base height measurements that we, uh, that we measured with a ruler that's accurate up to 1 16th of an inch. And we'll say that we decided the base and the height is, um, are these values. Um, the value for our ultimate strength is 15.2 KSI. And we know that we have an uncertainty in our base measurement of 1 64th of an inch. So we want to know how that propagates through. We want to know how um, that gives us an uncertainty in our ultimate strength. Um, and so that what we can do is we can say that's going to be equal to um, that's going to be equal to the rate of change of our un, of our ultimate strength with respect to that base measurement times our uncertainty in the base measurement. In this case we have um, d over db of our uh, ultimate strength. So in this case 3pl over base height squared times our uncertainty in the base measurement. And that's going to be our uncertainty in our ultimate yield strength. Well, the derivative of this is going to be equal to 3PL over base squared height squared times our uncertainty in our base measurement. We're going to use um, these values over here and plug them into this equation and then and then we're going to use this value here to get our uncertainty. So when we plug all those numbers in we get that our uncertainty um, due to our uncertainty in the base measurement is going to be uh, roughly equal to negative uh, 0 0.29 KSI. So if that was the only measurement we had uncertainty, we could say that the um, ultimate strength is going to be 15.2, and we want to do plus or minus uh, 0 0.3 KSI. And so that gives us an idea of how accurate our measurement is. Um, but we also have inaccuracies in all these other values. Um, even the load that's outputted by the instrument has some level of uncertainty to it. Um, and so what we're going to do is we need to figure out how to add these up. And we don't just add them up uh, one by one. We have to add them up assuming that they're going to be independent errors. And so what we need to do is we're going to say that these errors are independent. That means that if we think about them as vectors, they're all uh, perpendicular or orthogonal to each other. Um, and so just now I calculated the error due to the base measurement as being um, the change in the strength divided by, uh, with respect to the, the base measurement, times the error in the base measurement. Similarly, the error due to the height is going to be the change in the strength due to the change in height times the error in my height measurement. And the total error, the total uncertainty in my strength measurement is going to be um, the line connecting those two. In other words, the total error in my uncertainty is equal to the uncertainty from the base measurement squared plus the uncertainty from the height measurement squared. And if we wanted to include the uncertainty from the length and the uncertainty in our value from the instrument machine, even this would have an uncertainty that we could we could look up, we'd include those as well.
So this equation would give us the uh, total uncertainty in our measurement and that helps us know uh, kind of how big of a grain of salt do we take this value with um, how precisely did we measure that value now if we wanted to be more precise um, a lot of these measurements are length measurements and so um, we could reduce um, we already said that the um, uncertainty in our base our height and our length measurement are all uh, 164th of an inch. Uh, we can reduce all three of those by just using a better ruler. Maybe we use a pair of calipers um, that has a uncertainty of um, much, much smaller than 164th of an inch.